after I graduated from law school in 1999, a classmate of mine began dating an individual with a felony conviction. My immediate reaction was to advise her to end the relationship so that it didn't ruin her reputation and career. Fast forward to January 15th of 2020, when I stood before a judge in the presence of my family and friends and pled guilty to one count of signing an incomplete tax return. I, too, am now a convicted felon. Talk about a career change. I had spent nearly 20 years practicing family law, doing my best to help families resolve their disputes, all while raising three amazing children. But in 2015, when I incorporated, things took a turn. Suddenly, my taxes became more complicated, and I avoided dealing with them. So like any good procrastinator, I waited until the looming tax deadline and made a crucial mistake of not engaging the services of an accountant. That decision turned my life upside down. On June 2nd of 2017, I found out that I was being investigated, and initially I couldn't make sense of it. The next 18 months were like a nightmare that I couldn't wake up from. I suffered from crippling anxiety, constant fear, suicidal ideation, and a roller coaster of emotional turmoil as my new normal. In December of 2018, I was formally indicted. The fear and anxiety hit me hard on my drive to the courthouse, and I suffered a panic attack. It's very difficult to put into words, but it was the most humiliating and dehumanizing experience of my life. I next began a lesson in, like, a crash course in federal criminal law. And what I learned is that an astonishing 98% of federal convictions are the result of what's called a plea bargain. It's a process where prosecutors are aiming for convictions while criminal defense attorneys are working tirelessly to secure shorter sentences for their clients. But here's the tough part. The client often finds themselves in a situation where they have to make a difficult decision. And this isn't just my story. It's the story of millions of individuals who just want to be able to put their legal challenges behind them. Currently, there are nearly two million Americans incarcerated, many the result of a plea bargain, and often for nonviolent offenses. I then began a lesson what it means to live with the label felon. See, in the past, it was defined as with evil intent. But that has, definition has evolved. And now it's defined as any crime where the penalty exceeds one year and a day in duration. So this broad definition encompasses tens of thousands of nonviolent, unintentional offenses, many times without a victim. So here's the thing. This low bar means that average Americans commit felonies every day because it doesn't require intent. So if you sold your Taylor Swift concert tickets this summer for a tidy profit, you just might want to consult with your accountant. <laughs> Shockingly, one in 12 Americans have a felony conviction. It's a massive 500% increase over the past 40 years alone. So this label, felon, it carries a lot of weight in our society because it conjures up fear and judgment. So nobody wants to be the face of a felon. 
yet many look just like me. So now there's a movement to change the label to something like formerly justice involved. But history tells us that merely changing a label doesn't necessarily erase the discrimination or the judgment. So I always thought that punishment was intended to teach a lesson, right? To allow people to get back on track. But instead, it results in a life sentence in the form of systemic collateral consequences. Those consequences encompass such things as difficulties obtaining housing, employment, credit, or difficulties or inabilities to engage in activities like voting, volunteering, traveling, among so many other things. As a grandmother, I can't volunteer at my grandchild's school. One of the most difficult and humbling moments came when I had to sit down with my children and explain to them that I made a mistake that could send me to prison. But you know what? I made it through this very difficult and challenging time with the love and support of my family and friends. The people who really know me extended their grace without judgment. And for that, I am forever deeply grateful. So let me ask you this. Imagine that you learn that your neighbor that you've known for 20 years has a felony conviction from their past. Would you continue to see them as the individual that you've come to know? How about a new neighbor that moves in that you learn has a felony conviction? Would you extend them grace? Or would the label overshadow your perception? So the question is, how do we move forward into a hopeful future while society fears us based on the label and we're also being subjected to the collateral consequences? By allowing people to share their stories, by not referring to people as felons, we can take down the barriers that only hinder their progress and make a real difference in their lives. You see, back in 1999, had my friend listened to my initial judgment, she would have missed out on a wonderful husband, father, and an overall remarkable human. I was wrong. But it is disheartening to know that he continues to hide behind the label, fearful of the discrimination and rejection from others. You see, in order to set yourself free, we must be able to share our stories without judgment, to lean into them, not because they define us, but because they're no longer a defining aspect of our identity. Only then can we truly flourish. Thank you.